This podcast was created by fans for fans and is not affiliated with or sponsored by Hallmark or the Hallmark Channel. This is Eric. This is Sydney. And this is Hallmark Mysteries. And more. All right. It is August and I am still rolling with my guests. And today I have Andrea again. How are you doing, Andrea? I am doing great. So what's funny about you is you obviously do your little reviews over on home. Was it Hallmark movie reviews or no? Home, oh gosh. Hallmark channel movies. Hallmark channel movies, which how you get away with that name is beyond me, but that is I awesome that you do. Um, And uh, we always sort of joke because probably 97% we agree. Mm-hmm. I think we have very, very similar tastes. And yet when we've uh, got on our mystery of dancing detectives, we are a little bit different. So I'm a little scared to have you here today. <laughs> so we are today going to be talking about Francesca Quinn, PI. You ready? Oh, I'm ready. Okay. Um, So, but before we do that, I am going to introduce our cocktail, our signature cocktail, which is called the Old Flame. And obviously the Old Flame, because big premise of this movie is you have Frankie with uh, her ex, who she goes around sleuthing with, Wynn, who is her Old Flame. To make this, you're going to use one ounce of either gin or vodka, if you're like me, you can't do the gin, do the vodka, but probably goes better with the uh, gin. And then a half ounce of sweet vermouth, a quarter ounce of Campari, a half ounce of Contro, or however you pronounce it. And then you finish it off with just about an ounce and a half of fresh squeezed orange juice. Put it all on a shaker, shake it all around, and then you pour it into a martini glass, garnish with a little twist of orange peel, and there you go. You have an orange, or excuse me, an orange. You have an old flame. And part of the beauty of this drink is not only the name, but I could definitely see Frankie drinking uh, an old flame. This seems like her kind of uh, her kind of drink. For sure. For sure. What about you? Would you be pounding a couple of these? Go out with Frankie to uh, to uh, have, some, have have a girls' night out and drink some old flames. What would you, what would, what's your drink of choice? Well, I don't drink anymore. (laughs) What? Motherhood. (laughs) I know. So I'm like, I've got nothing. I would probably do, um, I don't even know. Like Uh I literally am the plainest. I love water, coconut water. Well, yeah, you, that's right. You're like thing is you're the, you've got the whole like healthy body, spirit, mind thing going. I used to drink wine. But I, I am now I've been sober for a year and a half. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, good no for problems. you. We're not going to, you're not going to go out and drink with Frankie then. So oh. Oh, you, uh, you'll be instead over at the jail with Megan and uh, <laughs> taking some, delivering her some books. <laughs> so. I do love to read. All right. Well, you're giving them the book to, uh, to, to to Megan to plot her murders. Well, I won't do that. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how this. We'll see how this goes. If uh, if we tend to disagree again, then I'm going to be convinced that you're secretly uh, a murderer like her. So. <laughs> oh, okay. God. So are we ready to roll? Ready to talk a little little Frankie Quinn? I am ready. All right. So w- tell me a couple things that you liked about this movie. Okay, so first, I am I live in the Twin Cities, so I live in St. Paul. So, and this movie was based in Minnesota. So that is already one thing I loved about it. And they actually had still shots of Minneapolis, which was great. The town, St. Ben's, is actually a college just outside of Minneapolis. So I don't know if they did that oh, wait, on purpose. St. Ben's is an actual The college. Place? So that's not the town name. Oh, okay. But it's, it's a college that is about an hour outside of the Twin Cities. So I was like, that's kind of a cute little play. I'm not sure if they did it on purpose. Uh, So I enjoyed that. And again, I really liked the stills were of Minneapolis. I don't think it was actually filmed here, 
but they had no, where, it was it, it was, was up the, in British Columbia. That's what I figured. But they used a couple of this like the backdrops. I was like, that actually looks like it could be Minneapolis. So I appreciated that aspect of it as well. Um, I loved the old school detective vibes and the voiceover and like her like gruff, like talking, you know, about the mystery. I can see how people would not enjoy that. But for me, again, I like those old school mysteries that worked for me. I liked that both leads were, I don't know if they were both police people, detectives at some point, obviously, you know, she left and did her own thing, but that was, it wasn't kind of as you say, like the nosy person who right. was just your busy body. Like she had full like training in this. So I appreciated that. Um, well, she even threw that out there when, uh, he was like, hey, you stay out of this. And she's like, no, I am a detective. I get to go and do, you know, investigate for my client. So, yes. Yeah. And so I really appreciated all of those things. Uh, I think, so I was telling you before, I'm like, I've watched this now, I think three, maybe four times. I would definitely say after watching it this third time, I was like, okay, I feel like I'm finally piecing together some of the story because it is, there's a lot going on with this movie. So if you watched it the first time and you're like, I hated it, I would definitely watch it at least another time because I think there are some things that you pick up the more that you watch it because it's a, it's a lot. The story, there's a lot. <laughs> yes, there is. So yeah, those are kind of the main ones for me. So I'll say it's interesting that you say that it's a lot because I'll probably be all over the place a little bit, but I also, I really liked sort of the bones of the story, but at the same time, I also thought at times it just became just convoluted and overwhelming where I'm trying, like, like, of course I'm taking notes because you and I are going to be talking about it tonight, but I think just like an average viewer needs to sit there and take notes to keep going, of, you know, everything that's going on and even taking your notes, you would have to stop and rewind. So there's a lot going on, but the essence of it, and maybe like you said, each time you watch it, a little more gets revealed because you don't have to like, okay, I know what's going on here. I don't have to pay as much attention to that. So now I can focus on something else. And so it can keep rolling, rolling, rolling in that, in that aspect. Um, so I thought like just inherently it was a good mystery story you know it had a lot of a lot of good stuff to it and i'll talk we, you know we'll talk about it before i really like like i'm with you I, I liked the um the voiceover um it definitely had that like i don't know yeah like 50s or 60s detective thing going with it um, I really liked the backstory. I thought the backstory between Wynn and Frankie was great. Sometimes in the mysteries, they just sort of throw a backstory in there and it, it's like, okay, just go with it because it helps, uh, you know, it, it's good for the plot. But this one really had an interesting aspect to it, of which we're going to talk about a little bit later. But um, another thing that I, I, first of all, I love, Mallory Jansen. I think she is just one of those people who is just unbelievably beautiful. And which, and I don't know what you call it when you had like the little strands of hair on each side of your head. She pulls that off. Like, oh my, does she pull it off? Um, it, and it was funny because I, I liked her in it. And, you know, I think about her and her pen pal or whatever the the Tyler Hines Chris movie she was in, it was like 12 gifts of Christmas or something like that, where she's just, you know, cute and everything like that. But she, she was able to pull off sort of badass Frankie, I thought. Oh yeah. Um, but what I really actually liked more, I, Beatrice, the, the partner cop, I thought <laughs> she was fantastic. And I don't I know why her. we don't see her in other things. She was so good in this movie. I agree. And I absolutely loved her because sometimes, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the partner is just sort of a throwaway character. She held her own the entire time. In fact, I almost found myself sometimes, I forget what the, uh, the nighttime, the sleepy robber case was called that she was following, but I kind of almost wanted to watch that one more than, uh, Carl's murder here. Cause she was great. 
And then Terrell Rothery, or however you pronounce her last name, as as Megan. Oh, good. She was she like she's a, a very pretty woman, but man, can she show off an evil face? Like you just look at her and she could look psychotic, which is funny because you see her in other things and she's just, you know, couldn't be lovelier, but she was great in that role. I mean, I just, she gave me the heebie-jeebies whenever <laughs> she, was, you know, talking and just some of the looks that she gave. So I thought that was, you know, really great. And the last thing I'll say was it just had some really cool cinematography that was definitely, I thought, um, the what 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 did you think of the the prequel for um Aurora Tea Garden? Did you like it or where were you on that one? That it was okay. Okay. I think so, it would grow on me. I, I think that would, I mean that one I had a tough time adapting, I think, because I liked Aurora Tea Garden. But I, I, I think I can get past it. So but one of the things I really liked about that movie and this one when I rewatched it as well. But it just like I say, that cinematography is just definitely had that little edge to it, a little darker, you know, a lot of even, you know, the some of the mysteries, the crosswords or the even mystery one-on-ones, they're they just don't have that darkness where this one had like really, I don't know, like you say, that's that old detective feel to it. And I thought it was just from a cinematography, just fantastic. So like I say, I liked all that stuff. All right, you're sounding like you're liking it a little bit since you are in four times, three times watching it. Or is there anything that you maybe weren't loving about the movie? I mean, really, the, I only wrote down one thing that I really didn't like, which would be, I think, and this is probably what turned off, I believe, people from this movie a little bit is both the detectives. They come in quite hot in terms of like, they're not friendly in their demeanor. Like we're used to at Hallmark, you know, having like a little quirky or personality that's like a little bit more bubbly. And they both, they were not. Like they were just right. straight shooters. And I, I watched until about 30 minutes. Then they finally, I think, cracked a smile or a joke, but it took 30 minutes. And so if you kind of shut it off after the first commercial, which is usually 20 minutes in, like you might not have even seen a little softening, but they really didn't soften much throughout the entire movie. I mean, even at the end, they were still pretty hard-nosed detectives and they were just kind of there and so if that's not your thing I can see how that would be very off-putting especially you know a two-hour movie with very intense people it's funny you say that because there definitely was a various obvious moment when it did lighten up and I had it in my notes when I first was taken I go kind of like you said started out really intense a little like overwhelmingly intense at the beginning and also like i say this is where they overload where they just threw everything at you with some of the you know the backstory was going on all the things that were going there but like you said they came in you know hot and heavy at that beginning not in like sexy hot and heavy but just plot and then all of a sudden it sort of just eased into the movie and i was like okay it did that but then to your point too that tension like sort of let go for a moment but then it just came back and it maintained, but it wasn't like that beginning where it was just like, boom, 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 boom. It just was that steady tension. So I agree with you. And I think, like you said, the beginning, a lot of people, I think maybe get put off because also that voiceover and- And like she was say, not so, It was right. not like a upbeat, not, upbeat. It was just it's a It's not Mallory movie. Jensen who, like, I remember when I was, I was so excited for this, but once again, I was excited because I thought it was going to be kind of a cute, quirky mm. Mallory Jensen, a la, you know, her pen pal, a la 12 gifts of Christmas. And that's, we see, we see Mallory's uh, range in this movie because yeah, she does, she does not bring that other than looking fantastic. She is not a little bubbly person by any means. Like she could kick your butt, which the, the, I'm just jumping all over the place now, but like at the end when she goes in and jumps Sally, like that was pretty like badass PI stuff there. It wasn't like some of the other ones, which are kind of silk. Like you talk about, you, you like your Aurora tea garden, but whenever uh, CCB goes and like, does it, you can tell that she's library just like, book. yeah, she's a library attack and not a, not a, you know, a, a tough PI. Um, 
So, like I said, I thought this, I kind of agree with you. Like it just, the beginning to me, it just came so much going at you that it was just really, really confusing. And to your point, you have to get past that first commercial break to where you can really, okay, okay. And then it, 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 like I say, it stays a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of those red herrings in there. I don't know if they needed every which one. I think like the director sort of took us and was just like, okay, I got to amp up. I got to amp up. I got to amp up a little bit. But um, so it just seemed a little bit confusing. And then one of the other things, and this is kind of a big premise. Now you've seen it four times and you say how things reveal themselves a little more each time you see us. So maybe you can help me with it. I just never understood why Megan was so like mad at Frankie and Wynn that she wanted to ruin them and destroy them. Like, what was it that really had her all mad at them? I never really understood that premise of it. And that was a very big part of the movie. I think from watching, I feel like that might've been a thread that they like used into another movie if they make another one of it and just kind of keep that maybe in the backdrop of just like, hey, remember, this is what happened. And then just kind of unfolding maybe more about their relationship. And I know that when I looked up to see who wrote it, because I was like, um, it feels very kind of like it came around Mystery 101. And then people right. kind of put like these two characters and are they like, oh, is this supposed to be what happened? Because there never was another one. And obviously now there isn't. And then John Christian Plummer wrote this one as well. Right. And so I think there was a lot of like, is this you know what was going to happen and I can also tell that he wrote this just because I feel like Jill's character in Mystery 101 and then you know Mallory's character and I think he did um, Martha Vineyard I don't know if you've watched those have you watched I, any of those yeah did with he, Jesse did he... Metcalf he also wrote those okay. and, so, and I don't remember the lead's name the girl um, but all three of those women Sarah something they're all more intense. Like if you look at those three mysteries compared to some of the other ones, like all three of those women are, are like not as bubbly, not as like smiley and like, you know, kind of like Hallmark Eve when we think about some right. of the other mysteries, like they are much more intense. So I'm like, he must have written these characters to be like, I am, take me serious. Like I am going to be out here doing these things. And so when I saw that, I was like, okay, that makes sense. I enjoy that strong female character um maybe they would hopefully they would soften her a little bit because I think the other two you know series the leads like Jill does soften and so right. does you know Martha Vineyard so I'm assuming like that was the plan maybe she'll soften a little as the series would go on but starting her here so there is room for growth for the character that was kind of my thought process behind some of that intensity with her so when we did talk to uh John Christian Plummer, he did say, I believe <clears throat> that this was originally sort of written as a part of Mystery 101, but it was just too, too intense. So it was changed for that because it was, it, it, it was too much for Mystery 101 when they, they went at it. Um, but he also, one of the other things he said, because we, we talked about that with his, with his female uh, characters with Jill, and he said he specifically is over the, you know, the the incompetent, nosy body woman. Like he's all about the strong woman. And so, right, it's not a surprise that he did it. And I think it's Sarah Lind. I think that's yes, her name. I think you're right. Yep. Um Z or Zar Z, right? I think. Yeah, it's not something I mean, that like sounds that. familiar. I haven't yeah, seen I think that's stuff in a while either. But um the uh but so I, I was going to actually get get into that in a second about Ooh. the mystery one. So we'll come right back to that. But yeah. so another thing that I didn't like, and this is like one little petty thing that just kind of annoyed me. It's like when I watched um, Making Waves and they kept saying OBX, OBX, of which I don't think anyone who lives in the Outer Banks actually calls it OBX. I think that's more like that little bumper sticker thing. And I think they all just call it the Outer Banks or whatever they call it. Because I do, uh, we have some, of our offices are out that way and i've never heard anyone say obx so one of the things that annoyed me about it and I, I as i was thinking about it later i was trying to wonder if this was part of what um was done on purpose but how frankie kept calling uh the one guy uncle bill 
even though clearly their relationship was fractured. It seems like if, you know, you or I went through that, we wouldn't still be calling him Uncle Bill. We'd be like, hey, you were this bad guy. So you're just Bill to me now. You lost uncle because, you know, you obviously wasn't the real uncle. And then how they would refer to Megan as stepmother, your stepmother, or this stepmother. Like as an adult, you don't really call it your, it's like your dad's wife or, your, you know, Megan. You don't really say stepmother. It's not like as it came in as a little kid. So it just kind of there. But then I was thinking maybe what they were trying to do was create that real like family connection that was getting fractured. And so Frankie, you know, she lost out on Wynn and she lost her quote unquote uncle. She lost step like so it's sort of trying purposely to have that family and show how her family is, you know, even if it's unconventional, is sort of a mess. So I don't know if I was overthinking it but it kind of annoyed me during the movie. So we'll just leave it as that. And then another thing, which you can maybe clear up for me, and it's not necessarily I didn't like, but when I rewatched it, I didn't catch this the first time. But when they were, when Wynn and May, um, uh, Frankie were questioning Megan, and they said something about how Carl, Frankie's dead, dead fiance, they kind of, I thought, implied that he was actually romantically involved with Megan for a while and she was like manipulating him that way did you do you think that was going on or was it just like she he was oh his old teacher and he looked up to his, his old teacher or was there like a little extra extra well I think in watching it so I I thought that maybe the first or second time but then yesterday when I rewatched, it seemed more like a mother figure because they said his mom died and right. that's what it was. But the way it came off, I, I agree, but it it's a little dicey. They kind of really blurred that line of like, okay, like, was this a romantic thing? But then they also do say mother. But again, there's so many moving parts that it took me about three times before I kind of was like, okay, I think they did mean mother figure. And she's so evil and manipulative. She could be mother figure who also is lover figure who utilizes that mother thing for creepy thing to control him even more right which is definitely would be an unsaid for hallmark I was gonna say, I'm so gonna maybe maybe next time when uh when, when we talk to uh john christian Plummer for mr island maybe i'll have to bring that up and ask him if there is a, a hanky panky there because like i say that would be very new. a lot yeah. that'd be a lot all right so let's as we're going to talk about the quality of the movie but as we talk about the quality of the movie i want to get into that mystery 101 because everyone talked about it and i'll say the first time i saw it i wasn't really seeing it but then when i watched it again i'm kind of like well wait it's the you know they were dating detective and now he's murdered. So I could see it like as that continuation after seven and you really do have to say, okay, Amy Winslow's character is dramatically, you know, remanufactured be this PI from being the, the history teacher. But, um, I, and, you know, and she still had her father figure who she saw and, so I, I, I guess this time I kind of could see it. Um, but like I say, at the same time, when we did talk to him, he didn't make, he, he kind of downplayed that it really was episode eight, more like it was just a, like a rough draft of a mystery 101 that turned out into something. But do you think it was really, and he's just sort of being coy, do you think it really was, was episode eight? Because it does make sense, I think. But we yeah. could also be reading into it. In the end, though, I mean, it doesn't really, I mean, maybe that's their intention was to kind of keep going because it doesn't resolve anything with their relationship, per se, because we're left with questions at the end of this movie of like, I mean, they're not together by any means. At yeah. The end. And so they, they, could, still, they, could, they could tweak it, though, in the, you know, as they're adjusting it. Well, I don't know if they're, I mean, who knows how many they were. Right. hoping to kind of keep going with the mystery 101 because you could have easily ended like this and then had you know 
we want right. more. So then, you know, keep right. kind of playing with that. So, I mean, yes, I totally could see it. And this one definitely felt, you know, that's why I was like, this is totally connected to the mystery 101. And that's why I look up just to see if, you know, John did write this. Cause I was like, it's very much of the darker realm of the mysteries, which if people didn't like that, which a lot of people like. So, so what well. you're saying is you yourself, you didn't like hear the chatter about that. You yourself had that feel that it had that mystery 101. You came to that. I, I, I okay. completely forgot about it from last year. Cause I just kind of was looking it up last night just to kind of see, cause I was like, man, it really feels like, okay, you know, in alignment there. And I will say I mystery one-on-one I enjoy, but it's if maybe it's, I don't even think it's my top three mysteries, which I know is probably blasphemy to say. Cause I know everyone, yes, I know I get, I, trust me, I get it all the time, but I'm like, I have other ones like both of ours is gourmet detective is our top one. And that's, I have other ones. And I really like the murder. She baked. Um, I still like those as well, but this one, I maybe, and then you're wrong about Chronicle because Chronicle is so good. Yeah, no, I tried that one. It's not, that's below. It's okay. You can be, you can be wrong. Sometimes you don't always have to be right. <laughs> Still not my fave. Um, but this one, I would say I would probably like this better than the mystery one oh one potentially. Um, if they would have kept, I, maybe they will. Cause who knows, maybe right. I don't know if this one, cause I think it got enough hate online, not like hate, hate, but not enough people really love this one to kind of remake it. I don't think, but this is one that I would love to see, you know, kind of keep going and playing with those threads of these, of these characters and see how they soften and can they work together? And does the stepmother in jail, like, I feel like they could totally play with that and like keep that going throughout other movies. Oh yeah, totally. Um, for, I, I was thinking back to when I did my review of it, um, when it first was released. And I think the thing I said was, it seemed like it was that movie that people either loved or hated. And there was really not a lot of in between people. And I kind of was funny because I was in the in between ish uh, thing. But I, I agree with you. And this is sort of my little bandwagon for Hallmark. I think when they do a mystery, they just they have to commit to three. I know it's hard and I know there's the business aspect and the ratings, but they have it's mystery, right? Unless it is completely confined to a um, like a, gr a great example, we just talked about the um, to catch a spy, and that one was a complete movie. It didn't need anything else. There was nowhere really like sure they could have had them get together and keep going, but at the same time, it was completely all resolved there. There was no real big romantic tension or cliffhanger or anything really. But for the most part, like almost every other one really needs to commit to that three because they have to develop those stories. The the backstory, like they gave us the, 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 the crumbs, but we need more. And like you said, if you can learn a little bit more about Frankie, that some of that tough exterior, I think would soften. And then there's the whole thing, which you, you, you learn, which I thought was fantastic about, yes, she was engaged, but she kind of just got engaged because out of like, um, I don't know, sadness is the right word, but because she was still hurting over when breaking up with her. But she said, I didn't, I never loved him. I didn't really think I wanted to marry him. He just asked me and I said, yes. And, you know, but I still wore your bracelet, which I'm assuming the bracelet's from him. But yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, to, to your thing, you really do need those three episodes. And I think you can wrap it up. Like, I know you're not a fan of Picture Perfect, but when, you know, it sort of told its story, you know, could it have gone on? Yeah, they could add more, but at the same time, it concluded and it was fine. You got to know the characters. You got to know what was going on. And and I, I just think you have to have the three. And this one, like you, is, I think if you had another one and people got to peel away the little bit of the onion and people like me who are just confused and got some more answers, I think would like it more. I wish they would go back to when they did the garage sale mysteries in August and they played a new one every Sunday night. Yeah my favorite like I loved like August I would always looking forward to August because I'm like great a new you know garage sale mystery and I have so many people in the DMs who say the same thing so I wish Hallmark would go back and like you know give us hey here's a new mystery and we're going to play it you know four weeks in a row a new one and so you can kind of get to know these characters and say do I want to go along you know to this town because again you know that's a big thing for me is to the town where they're at to the side characters which again I loved that 
side detective that was there. Like she was wonderful. The father was great. We didn't get to see him a ton. You know, the little places that they go in town, the little cafe and all of the places, that is a backdrop of a lot of the mysteries. And that, I mean, that's why people, again, like the murder she wrote in Cabot Cove, because you get to know the town, you get to know the side character. Eden Lake. No, I said murder she wrote. <laughs> oh, murder she wrote. Sorry. I, I thought oh. you went back to your murder she baked. No. Also, you're just trying, yeah, to, you're trying to get, you're trying to get us to meet uh, Minnesota as much as possible. Oh, right. So, but yeah, so. 100 percent they need to have a couple of them so okay so you really definitely since you came to it on your own you're just watching and you had the vibe you definitely think it was that uh that mystery one okay like i say i i could i didn't know i didn't think it at first and i think it was dara from dear harmark who uh, was the one who told me about that uh theory and i was like okay but i hadn't i didn't watch it again i just thought about it and I didn't really, I'm like, okay, whatever. But then when I watched it yesterday again, I was like, oh yeah, I really see now where, where, where you could, where you could come up with that. But I had to be led there. Right. I was not one who's like really put two and two um, together. And I, if I was a better sleuther, like you were, I probably would have, uh, would have done it as well. I did not realize though the Martha's Vineyard. I would not have guessed that to go along with the writing. I was like, that was surprising to me. All right. So overall, what would you say as far as the quality of this as a as a mystery? Do you think the mystery itself was was great or was it just more or less the story you liked? I mean, I think the mystery, I think it was good. Again, I think you have to view it a couple of times to really to pick up all the different pieces. Like it took me until really the last time to figure out that the guy, the security guy that was in there with Megan was the one giving the books oh, and that right. she came down. And I'm like, either I missed it or I didn't like, I was not paying close enough attention because I, I never quite clicked. I'm like, who is this guy again? Because you're introduced that first time to so many people that right. I completely was like, I don't know this guy is. And this time I was like, oh, I get it. I think they say it and I just must have missed it because again, sometimes the yeah, dialogue in these go exactly. back too. And so I finally clicked in who that guy was, what he was doing, but little things like that, I think that, you know, make the mystery a bit challenging. It's good because you're kind you're left guessing of like what's going on and trying to piece together everything. That's kind of where I think where I'm at too, where I thought it had like the good fundamentals of the mystery but I found it maybe just a little too overwhelming that there are too many red herrings, especially ones that you just knew weren't going to be like the murderer. Yeah. Um, and so it just created a lot of, of, of character that just got you a little bit overwhelmed. Like for you, you missed, and that was a pretty big thing because the, um, the, the, prison guard there was the way that they were able to figure out you know that megan was behind carl's murder so it's a very big thing but you're so overwhelmed with all these other characters and other things going on that you just sort of you know whoa you know right over your head that so i think the, they, I, I think it could have cut back yeah the a little the, bit strain, like the minneapolis girl that they went to her offices like we didn't need to go that in depth i don't think with her like Cause that was probably right. where I was like, oh, okay, we're, we're going down this path. And then that guy that tackled her in the hallway, all these little things that you're like, okay, but we right. spent too much time with them. We're not enough on the actual, like, you know, here's what was happening. So we could get it in one shot first needing to watch it three times. And for me, what I thought it was, was more the director than the writing. And I think the director kind of, could have went with some things being a little bit more um, subtle, but he decided to hit us over the head with a lot of them. Yeah. And so I looked him up and he's actually a a Hallmark guy and he's a Hallmark mystery. He did Curious Cater. He did Matchmaker. He did Haley Dean. We both like Haley Dean. Um, so he's definitely knows how to direct some, mis well, I wouldn't say match matchmaker mysteries knows how to direct a mystery, but that's a whole nother issue. Um, but Curious Cater and, Haley Dean's just darn right good. So, um, and by the way, uh, John Christian Plummer wrote Curious Cater too, two of the three. Um, so 
he he should be able to do it. But I thought, like I say, he just came in with too many of the red herrings, a little too heavy, and just should have gone for a little more subtle, subtle things. Like the most subtle one was <clears throat> the who turned out to be the killer. And that's how I was able to figure out that's who the killer was because a, once again, Beatrice, right? That's her name. Um, she's off doing her thing. And I'm like, why is she doing this thing? This, this case. And I'm and like, well, sure. of course, this is why, because it's going to have to tie into it. And then they start saying how, you know, everybody falls asleep in their chair after drinking a little bit of the coffee or whatever. I'm like, okay, okay. And she's dating him. But, um, that's one of the things, and we've I talked about it with him and when we interviewed him too with JCP is like he reveals the the murder. He doesn't really do a lot to say, "Hey, I'm going to completely conceal it. You can solve my mysteries, but I'm going to try to tell such a good story that it still goes." And that's why Mystery One Hundred One I think still works. Like after the first one, I sort of figured out the thing. I've always was able to figure out who the the murderer was, and I still enjoy him. I'm like you. It's not my favorite, just but I think it's a really good mystery series. I just think there's some other ones that I just really, really like that, uh, you know, for different different reasons and stuff. But I by no means think Mystery 101 is not a great mystery. So, but it's not like yeah, he just tries to tell the story and um, and make the story as good as the mystery. And so I think that's kind of what should have happened here. But um, like I say, I think the director just went a little over directing. All right, so the body count, which we like to uh, hit on, uh, mostly because Sydney likes it. It was, I believe, didn't she? I think she killed six before she got caught. I thought it was four. four. It was four? Okay. I, four. Um, I just remember it was several. Well, let's go with several. And then there's only one. Carl was the only one who was murdered in this one. So we'll just say five. Five to seven, depending on how many Megan killed. Maybe she had some unknown ones there. So, okay. All right. Last one we talk about is style. And this one I had a really tough time with. And not, I don't know. What, what, what did you think? I mean, the it was just very, mostly suits. I mean, very professional and it's not, uh, nothing out of the ordinary. I mean, I guess what you would expect if you went into a detective office or a police office and you're like, yeah, you're wearing the suits, both of them. Right. And that's kind of, I, I didn't know, what, all I had to say was uh, Frankie, once she uh, loosened that hair up and did those, those little, whatever you call that, let those, those bang things down, her hair was fantastic. And, um, but other than that, you know, it was pretty drab, functional cop wear, like you said. And the other thing I'll say was she had that big old pickup truck which I would think if you're a private eye, you'd have some very discreet like Fords, like LTD or something like you could be in your stakeout and no one's going to know. See, Whereas- in From Minnesota and from, I'm actually from a farm country. Pickup trucks, that's not going to stick out. Like where they're okay. at in the country, everyone drives pickup truck. If you're not driving a truck, you're probably going to stick out more. So <laughs> All I would right. Say all she right. Would, so yeah, so she was in her Mazda Miata. She would be a little more conspicuous than in her Ford 150. Okay. Yes. Like I'm in Arizona. People, a lot of people have them. It just, yeah, it seemed like just. Not as much in the city, but if you go out of the city. because yeah. Well, she was, she seemed drives. fairly rural because they had to drive into there in her office, which I'm gathering her office was that big barn, like it was, maybe it was her office house kind of thing yeah. that they showed, which seemed like actually it was. We can put that in style for decor. She had like a very fancy office that was, you know, that really white kind of cool office. So, but yeah, as far as like clothes, not much, not that, but the thing is, this is why I had a tough time. It wasn't bad. It was like very appropriate for their characters, but it wasn't, you know, cute stuff like, uh, I'll go with young Skylar uh, Samuels there in, in Aurora Tea Garden. Like she had super cute outfits on or Nikki Deloche with her, you know, curious cater when she's not in her little whatever, but her other clothes she wears, you know, she looks really cute and stuff. So, um, but yeah, when you're the cop, you, or a PI, you just kind of dress, dress uh, functional. All right, let's get into our rank rankings. 
uh, steam meter? I gave it a four just because there wasn't much there besides some seriousness between the two. See, I gave it actually a five, a little bit higher than you. And the reason why I gave it that five was just because of Frankie, like wearing that brace, like she still had the feelings for him. So there was this underlying tension. Yeah, sexual tension that was there, but it couldn't wasn't expressed at all, right? Not at all. In fact, if anything, there was a little bit of hostility. But at the same time, you could tell they both really still dug each other, but nothing was nothing was going there. That's why we need, like you said, two and three. So I gave it, I gave it a five just because I felt that that tension. Um, even if it wasn't, maybe it is, yeah, is a simmery steam meter. All right. The story. I gave that is, a 10. Okay. A 10. Ooh, nice. Okay. I gave, I gave it a seven. Um, like I say, I think mostly because I just got confused. So maybe, uh, maybe after what, but I will say to you, to, to your point, if I had ranked this after the first time I watched it, I probably would have given it a five because I liked it. Okay. I didn't dislike it. I didn't like it. Whereas this time, I think I knew a little more what's going on. So I relaxed and I liked it more. Yeah. So I, th I, I, I can see, you know, where, where you're going with that. Okay. The mystery. I gave that a 10 as well. Cause I thought it was a good mystery, but again, after watching it multiple times, because I probably wouldn't have done a 10 the first time. Um, did you, do you remember back? Did you, were you able to know? I that, looked up my old it? review just to kind of see, and I gave it four out of five. Um, okay. And I liked it for, and I wrote in there that people might not like it because it was a little more, you know, on the darker side for a mystery. And it was more old school detective um, thinking. But did, and, but did you know that, that, Sally was like, did you solve it? Do you remember? I don't remember. And I don't think I wrote that in my review either. I don't remember. Okay. I mean, even this time I was kind of like, oh, who did it? And then, and then I remembered as so, it was playing. So I gave it a seven as well as, you know, the story, but as I'm thinking about it, the one thing is, like I say, I, they, they gave those clues with it being, um, you know, how they kept saying about the sleepy and then they tied to the coffee and it, it kind of there. But the thing that was, that was only half the story, right? The big thing is the twist of her being Megan's long lost daughter, which that yeah, totally hit me out of nowhere. So maybe, maybe it is a little bit higher because that is a really interesting element that goes above and beyond and it kind of ties like how wh why is this woman doing it you know you think maybe she's just being manipulated which she kind of was but um well yeah and megan time. says in the jail that she's like well i never had any kids of my own which you know then she says that to you know frankie and quinn when they're in there and then you're like okay you know so you kind of rule that out because i was the same as you're saying that i was like yeah i totally caught like all of the sleepy time you know i put her as like okay she's clearly like the sandman they're trying to catch right but how do you connect it, you know, to Megan? I would not have jumped to that just based on, you know, right. what Megan had said herself. And, you know, you know, if you give birth to a child, so you're like, you know, kind of like, okay, how did you not know that? Or she clearly was lying. And who knows that backstory, which maybe you would get more of that in the next movie or so. 100%. So, so I think maybe I would have raised it, but I gave it a seven. So I'll stay with that because I can't do my math very well. All right. <laughs> The acting in the movie. I gave that a 10 as well because I thought it was excellent. I know. I think I know where you're going with this one. I think you liked it. I gave that one a nine. Um, and I think some of the, why I liked the uh, the main characters, I thought that, uh, um, what's his name? Like Dan Bruce or something like that. I, I forget what his name is. The guy who plays Wynn. Um, it's something Bruce. Oh. Um, and then Mauer Jensen, I thought they both were great. Like I said, the dad was fine. The uh, Terrell and uh, Beatrice 
Um, they were both amazing there. So I thought like there's that whole core was great, but then the other side, like the, the agent, you know, she kept, I kept thinking she was, did you ever watch that 70s show? I watched it a few times. I haven't watched okay, it. The mom in it. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I kept thinking she was the mom in that and not necessarily like the actual actress, but she just seemed to me to be like, like that kind of whatever character. And I found her like a little bit on the silly side. And then that the guy who, like you said, he got tackled in the, in the hallway, who was the, the, the hacker who was also trying to be the writer. Like he, I thought was, because I thought some of the, I guess the tertiary characters, those, the red herrings I thought were kind of weak, but um, so that was the only reason why I, get, I knocked it down one point, but I thought like overall the core, and I guess that's probably what we should do because with Hallmark budgets, they kind of do run out of money fairly quickly. So those, when you get to those characters are not usually the, the highest uh, skilled and they're, you know, still working on their career. So whatever. All right. The style of the movie. I gave that a six. Okay. I gave it a seven and why kind of like we talked about earlier. Yeah. Well, I can't say it was like fashionable, but it was right on point. So Function. the costumer knew what they were doing. Um, I probably should have looked up who it was, but um, totally for what they should be, they were exactly perfect. So gave it a seven. It's not higher because we kind of like it when they are whatever, super, super stylish and fashionable and maybe even uh, with out of character, like you know, but they kept him writing characters. So that was fantastic. All right. What do you, what do you total? 40. 40. That's pretty darn solid. Yeah. Pretty, pretty darn solid. I gave it a 35. Okay. Uh, we, we add up to that's a 75, which um, I never remember what our scale was when we made it up, but I think it was interesting. I'll say is I think this is a, um, one that you must watch again yeah just because like normally we say oh must watch again just because it's such a great movie and you obviously very much liked it but it's a much watch again just because you at least you at least have to watch it twice to for that second time to uh catch to be the, able to pay attention <laughs> and, and catch what's going on and and all of that so so we'll say definitely give it give it a go again and then it's actually pretty good pretty good movie and we both would like to see see a couple more episodes of it so okay all right andrew well thank you for joining us why don't you tell everyone where uh where they can find you and your usually fantastic reviews <laughs> i am verifying my instagram handle just to make sure it is hallmark channel movies is my instagram and yes i like to review after every movie on hallmark and hallmark mysteries I am looking forward to new movies in September and the Haunted Harmony Mysteries and Mystery Island, which I am, are those the only two that you know of we're getting? Uh, so there's, Christmas movies? there's supposed to be the Curious Cater oh. and the um, other Hannah Swenson. And Is I thought they were movie? supposed to come out in August. And I'm wondering if the writer's strike is like keeping them from releasing it because they're both American. Like obviously Andrew Walker's Canadian, but you've got um, Nikki, so she wouldn't be able to promote it. You've got um, Allison Sweeney wouldn't, and Cameron Matheson, they wouldn't be able to promote it. So I'm thinking, and those are two but, heavy hitters. But really at this point, they're, those are series that have been going on. How much promotion? I don't know, do those but two? why would they? If they're, they're doing they're two both, new ones, which you might. They're both ready. I know. So I don't know. Because Christmas will be coming in October. Right. So I don't know if they'll squeeze in a couple more. I would love to see them if they're... Totally, totally. Before and the, next and, year. And I thought that we had saw that they were, like, before the strike in... I thought it was in, like, May, June. They were saying, okay, it's coming in uh, August. And then <laughs> August, obviously, is coming and going without, without them. So, I don't know. All right. So, the murder... Let's just... We'll quickly talk about... Haunted yeah. Harmony Mysteries, Murder in G Major. So that's got um, Tamara Mari Housley in it, where she's off in the countryside to teach music. 
let's see, it's got version another Virgin River, which that uh, Terrell um, Rothery is a Virgin River uh, person, but um, Marco Gorazzini, do you know who he is in Virgin River? I'd have to look it up. Okay, I don't know who he is either, but uh, he's in it. And then uh, Eamon McCarthy um, is in it as well. So um, we got that one coming out on September 22nd, so almost exactly a month from now. And I then Mystery Island, which that one super super excited for super i'm excited always for. excited for any new mystery just to kind of give it a shot yes. and, but then it's hard because then you get invested in them and then when you only get the yeah. one and then they quit them and then it's hard because you get attached yeah you know going back to your thing you had the august of having the uh you know the month of garage sale but at least it used to be they still would be like twice a year when they oh, were yeah. doing like you know crossword or you know, they were, they were definitely more condensed than now where it's pretty long gaps, you know, it's that, so hopefully they, you know, I don't know with the new, cause it's not really new leadership at Hallmark because um, he's basically was in charge. He's just now being in charge of the, uh, the media portion too um, directly, but I don't, know. but yeah, Mr. Island, September 29th. So it's two weeks in a row. And then I imagine the week after that, well, no, when did Christmas movies start? Like probably like the third week of October. That would be my, I mean, right around Halloween is when they usually, yeah. but it depends. I don't know how many new movies have, we haven't heard based on, again, yeah. the strike. I don't, they might push that back if they don't have as many either. So there are probably lots, little things like that behind the scenes they're trying to figure out. Well, you, you know, Hallmark Enthusiast over there on Instagram, she, I've said that like kind of what I think too. And she's like, no, no, guarantee they have them all done. They're all done. They're all done. So she's I mean, saying, she's saying there's going to be a full schedule. But... I don't I mean, usually they're still making them though yeah. into October. Yeah. I don't know. The interviews I've listened to some of the actors are still like, yeah, I'm shooting my Christmas movie and it's, you know, just in the yeah, Christmas I'm, season, I'm, the, so. I'm the Canadian. So I guess they're all Canadian ones or non non sag at this point, anyone who's going to be in any of them. So yeah. And a new one that's not filmed. So, but yeah, so looking forward to those in September. Um, hopping back to just quickly on you, you, your, your little reviews that you do. And I don't mean to diminish them by saying little, but they are nice because they're little snapshots. You know, when we do ours, we talk for an hour or whatever, but yours are great because you just give it in a couple of paragraphs, your thoughts um, really hit those, 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 those points and you do them like right away. Um, you know, I'm usually, some of them I do right away. Some of them when I do them, I'm a week later or whenever because I get around to it. But um, so yeah, yours are are very delightful and fun to watch. And like I say, ninety seven percent of the time, um, I agree with you. I can't say we didn't we didn't disagree today. You were just liked it more than than I did. It wasn't like our dancing detective where we were kind of on the opposites there. So. See, I prefer this to Dancing Detective. And I know, again, most people probably the other well, way around. It's exactly the opposite. I mean, Dancing oh. Detective was like light, bubbly, can't take it serious. Right. And this one. Very serious. Very, was, a, was a serious, uh, was a serious mystery. It's kind of like when we talked, um, I talked to, uh, just recently about that. What was it? Um, Love Grows More or More Love Grows, the one with Rachel Boston over in Hallmark that oh, yeah, or yeah. Hallmark Myster actually it's all over in Hallmark Mysteries and or Hallmark uh, movies and mystery. But that was like an adult Hallmark movie, I thought. And this is the, yeah, this is the serious mystery along those lines. So. For sure. All right, Andrea. Well, it Thank was you. truly delightful having you. Thank yeah. you for filling in for Sydney. It was a blast. And um, I know we'll do it again. Chatting. When, I, like I say, you are guaranteed when we get gourmet detective to come aboard. So, Love all it. right, <laughs> talk a little Maggie and Henry there. Love it. All right, have a good night. Thanks.